Hi, what's up? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Cameron Moore, Ed Quinn here with us, The Oval. It's a great show. Glad you guys are here. How's everything going? Awesome. Awesome. How's it going with you? Everything's good. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a weird time, but it's cool to be having these virtual chats. And I feel like everybody's catching up on TV and I feel like people are, are definitely checking out The Oval. So what's it been like hearing from everybody, you know, these last couple months of the show? It's been, you know, it's, it, it's been so kind of, you know, I, I, was, I was talking earlier, Karen and I were in an interview earlier that we feel like we kind of won the lottery with this, you know, doing a Tyler Perry show, uh, you know, right when he's doing his big deal with Viacom, and BET Plus, and Tyler Perry coming home to BET. And, um, and then all of a sudden, you know, the world turns upside down. And yet, what's the one studio that can weather this? I already live on the studio. All my stuff <laughs> at my house on the studio. Nothing, literally nothing will change for me except a couple of cotton swabs along the way and, you know, flying private instead of flying Delta. Um, but besides that, nothing's going to change for me. I never leave the lot. So it's, you know, it, it really is kind of incredible that, and then to top it off, you know, everybody's home right now because, you know, we're going through this crazy hard time. Everybody wants to not be thinking about the situation we're in. So they just want to tune out and watch TV. And whose show is premiering right in the middle of the lockdown? I mean, we just, I don't know. This show just seems kind of blessed from being to end. That's awesome to hear you. Karen, how about for you? What's been the best part of the experience? Oh, wow. Um, the, the, the Oval in general, we've got a, a huge response. Uh, our fan base is amazing. We already had a built-in fa fan base because of Tyler Perry, you know, his fans are diehard. And people are loving the show. You know, we're um, the number one scripted show on cable television, and we've been holding that spot. So it's been a huge, huge blessing. And we're looking forward to going back, like Ed said. He, he lives on the lot, and because we'll be quarantining when we go back for season two, this girl is going to be his neighbor. So I'm excited. <laughs> roommates! We're going to be roomies. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That would be a good situation for you guys. What has been most surprising about this experience? Because for both of you, you've done a lot of TV and movies. What caught you off guard that you didn't anticipate? Ed, why don't we start with you here? Caught me off guard? You know, I, I, I got to say, like, none of it. Maybe I've just been doing this for so long that – I going into it just understood how how great this situation was. I've been on so many. Sh I mean, all on the pilots that didn't go because I couldn't find a space on the you know on the schedule for them. I've been on the the big series that got canceled. But it's you know the series that got hijacked by the network or the studio because the creator didn't like them and they got fired. And there's so much stuff that goes on behind the scenes that nobody knows about that just is the death of a television series. We have none of that. One man is the creator, the director, the writer, the producer. It's his studio. And he has this incredible relationship with Scott and everybody at BET. So all of a sudden you have this situation where I'm going into this going like, is this, is this going to be as, as advantageous and as unbelievable as I think it's going to? Because somehow we've gotten rid of all, this, this, this show's idiot proof. You know, because they're just, they're, we just don't, we're not going to have these stupid political battles. And sure enough, it all came to fruition. So in a weird way, nothing surprised me. It's all been just this kind of celebration. It makes it a lot easier when one person is really controlling a lot of that stuff. And I think it's also a huge advantage that it's this interesting concept, like anything political people are going to be into, but also like you throw your own little spin on it, suddenly more people come to the table. So Karen, when you think about the show, why do you think it resonates so much with people? Why do you think it's had so much success so far? Um, I, I think primarily because it's escapism. I mean, everyone wants to turn on something and get away from our current political climate. Everyone wants to get away from the stressors of their everyday lives. And you tune in 9, 8 central to BET and you just get locked into this madness that is the oval. And people are just having fun with it. I think that's the biggest part. People are enjoying the ride. I think Tyler Perry's done a lot of great things in his career. I think creating all these shows on BET has been really awesome. So when you guys both think about Tyler, what stands out the most about working with him and just what he's done for the industry overall? He's a, he's a, you know, the Horatio Alger story. I mean, he really is, you know, a man that built himself up from, you know, from nothing to be, you know, the, the first you know, black owner of his own studio. And he, 
that's even, a, a, I, I, you know, I don't even qualify it as that because when you go to that studio, it's 320 acres, the, the potential for growth. I mean, he could become the next Walt Disney. Mm. And I think that's his, his, his incredible, his goal. And he has the space and he has the infrastructure and he has the catalog. I mean, it is just, he's created this unbelievable juggernaut. And um, yeah, and so it's, and then, and yet there he is every single day on set, show after show, call to rap, weekends. I mean, I, I live on the lot. I would see him every weekend, every Saturday, Sunday. He'd come driving by in his little, you know, Polaris, you know, four wheel, four wheeler because he's checking on construction, checking on scripts, checking on. It's just, he, he's tireless and, you know, he was meant to do this and that is why he's so successful. Yeah, and that's really he, rare. Yeah, Karen, jump right in here. Yeah, he's he uh, is a history maker already. He's a trailblazer already, and you know it's been phenomenal what he's been able to do. No one else has been able to do that, especially in the black community. And it, it, it's just amazing to watch him work. We get to play in a replica of the White House, like, and it's it's almost to scale. And it's the set is amazing. If you haven't visited, when all of this stuff is over, please come and visit because it's incredible. Um, and to be woven into the fabric of what he's built, that history is so rich and it's not going anywhere. Um, we were part of the grand opening of his studio and that was, there are no words for it. it, it it's just been epic what he's been able to do. And I'm so proud to be a part of it. Our cast is amazing. Working with him has been amazing and I've been learning so much. And so I think we all feel very grateful to be a part of the project. That's really cool. So for the people that haven't checked it out, Ed, let's start with you. What are the, the big things to jump in on this? What, why should people check out the show if they haven't watched it yet? Well, you know, it's not a political drama. It's a big, saucy, soapy, primetime drama. And it is, um, you know, I, it, he jumps into it. Tyler jumps into this is more of an upstairs, downstairs. So we have the, uh, you know, we have the first family moving into the White House, new administration, um, and all the people who work in the White House and all of the underpinnings and all of the people who keep the White House running and who have to go from administration to administration and just came from administration that seemed to be pretty easy and pretty uneventful to one that's absolute pandemonium. Like literally before, like at the inauguration, before we even, before, before the band starts, <laughs> things are going sideways. And so, um, you know, that is really what the show is all about is just, uh, you know, like, like Karen said, escapism, told through an upstairs downstairs you know motif and is uh you know just a ton of fun karen how about for you what do you think people should be most excited about because there's a lot of different layers to the show so what's most important for people to focus on here uh, i wouldn't say that there is an important focus but what i will say is that um i think it's fun to imagine what might possibly have happened or be happening behind the doors of the white house we don't know what happens you know when when the president goes home and what happens with his family and it's just it's just interesting to imagine you know what kind of craziness could possibly be happening and what kind of madness could be following his uh his staff as they go home and all of the secrets that they have to keep it's really interesting just to to, to imagine how that could i hope it's not what is happening <laughs> but it's it's fun just to to imagine that that you know is something that could potentially happen it's fun to think about it's certainly fun to watch Karen, and ed thanks so much for jumping on best of luck and we'll talk to you down the road all right thanks so much dj